This One Degree Outside video is brought to you by Fluidform Bio, developing innovative 3D printing living pancreatic tissue to help combat type 1 diabetes. For the first time, you can join this visionary mission. Visit fluidformbio.com or their page on Start Engine to learn more about this exciting work. First weekday of the month, that means the monthly forecast for the month of June here at the One Degree Outside Weather Network. Now, look, I think the rundown on this, if you're in New England or the Northeast, is we're going to have a month with plenty of thunderstorms along the way. I'll explain to you why. First of all, I do love oftentimes in a monthly forecast to start out with 500 millibar heights. And for those of you who don't know what that is, basically, think about it this way. It's an average temperature through a deep column of the atmosphere. So the warmer colors represent higher heights or warmer temperatures through the atmosphere and the colder colors colder temperatures or lower heights, right? We're finally getting rid of the persistent trough that we've had across the northeastern United States for a little while. There may be a cutoff low that develops off the coast for a bit, but we, it will be replaced now by some summer heat that starts to flow into the northeast. The interesting thing as we get even through just the first week of the month is you start to see this setup where the polar vortex has not let go entirely. Not only that, it still exists near the North Pole, but it also still sends these little kind of rounds of cold energy pinwheeling down to the south. And that's important. What that does is it never really allows the northern tier of the United States to get lock, stock, and barrel to persistent building heat. You get these bursts of heat that may even be intense at times, but it's not the same setup like you have down south, where look at this, a bridged ridge, a big area of hot, high pressure builds from Texas all the way across the Bahamas into parts of the tropical Atlantic. So what it does is it sets up a clash, a collision between warmth to the south and cool to the north. Now, we don't get into the big incursions of chill. That is one change from what we saw over the month of May, right? But we're close. And what that means is by being ahead of it, you do a couple of things. One, you open up the gulf for some moisture at times, although the ridge may cut some of that off. Two, you open up at times perhaps the Atlantic for some moisture as well. And three, you get multiple disturbances rounding the base of this trough off to the west, and that means you get multiple disturbances that come into an environment supportive of blossoming thunderstorms. And that's why I say I think you've got multiple thunderstorm days over the month of June. Notice at mid-month, the ridge tries to expand across the eastern two-thirds of the country. We do think that has an impact on temperature. It's the reason that while we start out with the above normal temperature across parts Parts of the central United States and western U.S. to some extent, we take that and expand it off to the east. And yes, that may include here in New England as well. It's going to be a bit of kind of a, uh, a teeter-totter, a seesaw setup in terms of temperature. Do you tip the scale or not? For example, if you look and I zoom in in parts of the north country, we may not go above normal overall because of multiple thunderstorm events. I think as you come farther south, the chances that you get above normal on temperature are higher. The normal high being 76.2. June's not a bad month and that's in Boston. It's warmer when you get away from a sea breeze average and then 59.7 on the lows at night. Look, in terms of the uh, precipitation we got in May, I had told you maybe a normal to above normal month. It was above normal. That would have been the right way to go overall. Over 200% of our normal precipitation. Part of what we were thinking and even thinking now in terms of precipitation forecast for June is that, look, normal is no small amount of precipitation anyway. Uh, it was well over three inches for the month of May. Normal precipitation for Boston in June is almost four inches. And you'll see that in a second. So to say it's near normal, and if you're doing it in multiple thunderstorm events, it's kind of going to be a matter of where those storms hit and where they don't. So we've got above normal where we think most of the storms will hit, which is going to be across the uh, portions of the Mississippi River Valley running off to the east. Then you've got an area of much below precipitation, a bad fire month, maybe shaping up in Montana and Idaho. Basically, what you're going to get is multiple events where you have a westerly flow over the Cascades, and that will dry out and drive up the wildfire threat out there. So it's a tough start to the season, or at least a tough way to start the season there. And here at home, again, probably going to end up being near normal on the 3.89 inches of precipitation for Boston. The more that you get into the season where it depends so heavily on thunderstorms, the more variable those amounts can be. You can track all of it 14 days at a time. And don't forget, every Monday through the month, we'll also give you pattern predictions, looking out two weeks at a time every single week on a Monday. That always shows up with all of our videos at the top of our app, the One Degree Outside app, on both the App Store and Google Play. That's your look at the month ahead. We'll see how it turns out. You keep us posted. We always appreciate hearing from you at OneDegreeOutside.com and on social media. All the media platforms, our handle's the same. The number one degree outside.